Okay. All right. Uh, maybe close that door. Oh, yeah. Good morning, good afternoon, everyone. Um, I think we're all ready to go. Um, thank you all for being physically here to, uh, to be attending, uh, as well as online. I will be giving a presentation about uh, the white paper for uh, um, OCP and IEC 6150, which uh, Dean V, together with the Open Charge Alliance, uh, has created in the in the past year or so, I think. Um, my name is Kasper van Sluis, I'm from DNV. Uh, I've been working there for four years and from the beginning involved in, uh, in OCPP and the, the certification is also something that we are doing. Uh, the content I will discuss uh, in this session is uh, the white paper scope and objectives, um, as well as give a brief introduction about OCP 2.1. I think a session after this one has a is a very uh, elaborate session about the new features, but it's good to get a brief uh, picture of uh, of what is new and how then we will be using it in, in combination with 6150. And also a brief introduction about 6150, uh, which might be a new standard for. Uh, most of you because it's more utility uh, oriented uh, standard for system automation. Then we'll talk about uh, the Dura control uh, overview about the different types of uh, control settings uh, which we encountered and uh, try to make a nice package of. And uh, then we have defined business process and use cases. Uh, we'll give some examples of use cases trying to do the different uh, types of cur curves, limits and set points which we have. Uh, defined and then some conclusion and then also a uh, how to get started uh, with some uh, documentation to to look into and then we have of course time for some uh, questions um so the scope and objective is um uh, the, yeah, also a bit on background story is of course that ev charging will become bidirectional um wherefore then an, an ev can contribute to, the, to balance the electricity demand and supply or balance the grid or balance the, the frequency. Um, and then an EV or a cluster of EVs becomes a, a generator. Uh, wherefore then um, they need to comply, in, at least here in the Netherlands, to the requirement for generators, uh, which requires a generator to be a certain bandwidth uh, to, uh, to keep the, the grid stable. Um, yeah, and this is also applicable, of course, to other countries where they have local grid rules uh, and uh, yeah, the EVs uh, would need to stay uh, within such boundaries in order to stabilize or uh, keep the grid safe. And then our focus is uh, on utility to charge operator communication. Uh, there have been talks in the past that utilities wanted to directly control EVs or directly control charging stations. And uh, we view that uh, the charging stations are generally owned by the charge point operators and the charge point operators are somewhat of the, the middlemen, which would be able to uh, have a uh, geographical location of their charging stations and better therefore be able to support um, this uh, DUR uh, grid functionality. Um, so we're focusing on the connection to utility to charge point operator. And then we have this, uh, this overview, which uh, all of you, I guess, are familiar with, uh, just to have the full picture, I guess, with also uh, OCPI in there. Um, but uh, basically the, the connection of charge mode operator with OCP to the different levels of chargers, fast charging, public charging, home chargers maybe, um, and then also towards the EV with ISO 511 8-20. And then uh, the new link there would be a DSO to charge mode operator. We also put TSO in there. TSO in the Netherlands is, is Tenet, which is maintaining the, the electrical grid from uh, 110 or 150 kV and upwards, and usually the uh, the charging stations are connected to the DSO grid, which are stayed in Alleander and Nexus listed here in the Netherlands. So uh, it would make more sense for a charge operator to have a connection to to a DSO than to a TSO. Um, but yeah, we call them utility in general because these roles can also be merged depending on, on country. So that is the overview there. Then I would like to highlight some reference materials. So during our uh, study, we also, yeah, of course, we we looked into uh, IEC 6150, which is quite an elaborate uh, document or set of documents. Uh, of course, the OSP uh, standard, um, and then Frank has created a re request for change by adding the DUR control to OSP, which is basically all the new uh, DUR control messages which will be added to OSP 2.1. 
Um, so yeah, he created that looking at um, IEEE 2030.5 as well as IEEE 1547, uh, which is uh, about uh, some of these curves and different types of things you would like to control. Um, and then besides that also uh, ISO 1511-8-20 uh, has this uh, uh, BPT working group, which is also adding uh, elements to ISO 1518-20 for vehicle to X and for DUR support. And they were also doing some sort of mapping with uh, IEC 6150. So we were able to, to do some uh, uh, reflection and with some peers to compare our results of the 6150 mapping with what others have done and yeah, give each other some, some feedback and, and review uh, there. Um, so then the brief introduction of OSP 2.1 is that it will be uh, published uh, soon um, in 2024 uh, as planned, I understand, and that it extends the OSP 2.0.1. Um, so uh, yeah, it's an addition to 2.0.1. Um, and uh, yeah, it's based uh, of course on the JSON over web service, which is quite light wave uh, in comparison to IC6150. And the new features in 2.0.1 are then the, the bidirectional power flow for vehicle to X functionality, and ISO 1518 uh, 20 support, um, and as well as then these grid support functions uh, through IEEE 2030.5, as well as IC 6150, and that is what more or less we are focused on, and yeah, that is the addition Frank proposed in this this other document. Um, yeah, and then just a picture I think you're all familiar with is the the different links from utility to charge operator or CMS uh, to charging station to um, EV, uh, and um, yeah, that is the brief introduction. And then about the IC6150, uh, it is not a, a protocol, but it's a, a standard for system automation. So um, it has quite a few, <laughs> quite a few parts, uh, which elaborate uh, on a lot of different uh, aspects towards system automation or engineering. And um, yeah, I've mentioned below the, the parts which are interesting for you, but it's also quite a, an, an old standard, which was first published in, in 2003. Um, and later, the second edition, 2012, which more focused on a broader, uh, on broader domains, uh, also uh, calling it thereafter um, uh, yeah, automation system instead of utility focused. And in this second edition, uh, DUR elements were added for wind, solar, and also electric vehicle uh, assets. And this particular, um, yeah, with, uh, with an addition to amendment one, uh, that's uh, been published in uh, 2021. This is mainly contains fixes for the edition two. So always make sure to have the latest documents. Some documents of the IC standards are still from 20 uh, or 2003, and uh, others have um, yeah edition two amendment one, and that is then version uh, seven two for instance. So it's always good to have the the latest version. And then um, uh, IC 6150 we are using. MMS messages uh, over to PAP, and those are a bit more heavier uh, in general. I would say IEC 6150 is somewhat of a heavier protocol, uh, and then, yeah, it can be very elaborate, but we have funneled it down through just focusing on these uh, use cases. And besides MMS, uh, there's also Goose messages, which is more for within the uh, substation for uh, system automation and uh, precision commands and yeah, there's also sampled values, but we are just focusing on the on the MMS messages, uh, which will be suitable in order to exchange uh, these messages. And then the the parts uh, which we uh, used, and I would recommend for you to, if you want to have a look at it, to look at those parts first, because there are many parts. Is uh, uh, yeah, first on the data model is part six, seven dash three, seven dash four, and the seven dash four twenty. And the 420 is really about the, the dual logical nodes. So we're mainly looking at those. And the uh, 7-4 is about other logical nodes, which are also do also exist. And the 7-3 is about the, the attributes which are within there. So that's regarding the data modeling. And then regarding communication for the MMS, it's the part 7-2 and the, the 8-1. Um, yeah, and IC650 uh, wants to cover all these different aspects from uh, their control or DERM system distributed energy resource management system in order to combine all these different uh, assets for a uh, control system. Then for the DUR control overview, it's uh, maybe a bit of a, a busy slide, um, but um, 
on the on the top left there is the, the set point limits and curves and those are basically the different parameters which we're able to configure in a charging station using uh, the OSP messages as well as the IC6150 messages and what we have um, done here is basically that uh, we envision that there will be controllable clusters of charging stations or there's a charging station at a certain location or you have a fast charging station premises somewhere along the highway and these are geographically located and connected to a certain part of the grid. I suspect that a judgment operator would have already some information about uh, that location and the connection and, and those type of things. But uh, the judgment operator would somewhat define a controllable cluster, uh, which then, uh, as, as per cluster, would be able to be controlled by a utility using the messages I will present later on. Um, and uh, yeah, this, this, this is quite a step before actually having communication because such things would need to be uh, defined. Um, and then on the right, uh, from the IEEE 1547, there are quite a few uh, of these different curves, set points and parameters, which we then have mapped to the IEC 6150 logical nodes. So these are more or less the, the messages, I guess, um, and they are also then reflected to the OSP objects where these are all different um, uh, yeah, attributes which can be given in this dual control um, uh, message, which is defined in the, the request for change by, by adding the dual elements. And then we have defined uh, use cases. So yeah, this is just uh, from the white paper that we have the mapping for your total uh, overview. Um, and basically then also for the, uh, the AC bidirectional charging, the uh, BPT working group is also um, adding extensions for DUR for IC 1511A-20 uh, um, as the inverter is uh, is in the EV and that needs to be communicated as well. For DC charging, the inverter is uh, located at the charging station, so that is covered already. We have defined um, three business uh, processes. Uh, first one being the initial uh, established seeing the initial communication between the utility and chargement operator. So that's what I mentioned earlier already, that a chargement operator would have defined some sort of uh, clusters which can be controlled with, with a geographical location um, and uh, yeah, their, their specifications of, of what, is, what is actually there. Uh, and in this initial communication, then uh, the utility will be able to receive this information and also if applicable or they set uh, certain constraints uh, such as curves, limits, and set points uh, on these uh, clusters if the grid is in such, con uh, such a congested state, uh, which uh, would be required. And these uh, business processes can then basically use the different use cases, which are for the different types of curves, set points, which we have defined. And the business process two is basically uh, when, uh, when there is such a change in the uh, uh, network model calculations of the utility, where a curve, set point, or limit needs to be adjusted um, because uh, there is a change happening uh, wherefore, um, yeah, the curve can either be, be lifted because congestion is lifted or it needs to be restricted even further. And we expect that yeah, this will not be, well, in the start, it will not be uh, often communicated, uh, but uh, maybe when we uh, more dynamically will use the grid, uh, this might be become, um, yeah, uh, communicate uh, more often and then there's uh, a safe mode in case communication is, is lost uh, that you want to make sure that the grid is protected so um, yeah we have just mentioned that uh, not set any percentage boundaries but you would could consider that maybe you want to lower all the the curves to uh, to 20 percent less or something in order to to keep the grid protected but it's something to also keep in mind uh, then the 14 use cases we have defined uh, again, the same picture, which are then mapped to the different uh, factors and, and, and uh, well, different uh, limits, set points, and curves. Um, two of these use cases are for registration and reading. So the first one is more or less again about what is this uh, controllable cluster about, or what is the, the asset about, what uh, capacity does it have. Um, so more or less also nameplating of this, uh, which is of course initiated in the first business process of uh, of getting information from the asset which can be controlled um, and then also uh, reading so if possible then the utility could request uh, information from the the charging stations or, or charging station clusters in order to get more insight into what's happening in that part of the grid 
because the DSOs have a limited, or the, yeah, they're building digitalization, but they have limited view, view in the in their distribution grid. So maybe this will also help them with a better understanding what is going on in their local grids. And then 12 use cases are for the different set points, limits, and curves to configure. And uh, yeah, you can see it, uh, it uh, ranges from a uh, power factor um, to uh, a, a reactive power, um, active power, uh, as well as different uh, trip curves for voltage frequency, um, and also a, a re-entering of service and uh, yeah, limitation for, for active power. And then I'll show uh, three use cases uh, now to uh, where you can see then the comparison or actually the actual mapping we have done. Um, uh, so basically uh, you can see that also this use case also represented in this document of which Frank created for the request for change for adding their control to OSVP. Um, then these are the logical nodes in 6150 and they have attribute sets underneath them um, which uh, yeah we can we can use and we have introduced uh, basically um, that there will be a reason given or a reason provided to the charge point operator for why a certain limit set point or curve is set which is done by the general uh, the ggio um, and then the different logical nodes like uh, uh, dwmx is for uh, this uh, active power which you can either set a percentage or an actual value and uh, then there is an, an activation uh, possibility as well so you can you could also already configure the curve but not act, uh, activate, activate it yet uh, yeah, you need to change the setting there in order to be active um, and then there's also priority which is also you know OSP, uh, as well as then the the reference of the uh, geographical location so that you would know which um, which cluster of charging station or which which charging station is targeted for this certain curve set point or limit? So it is this, this geographical location in, uh, which is represented with uh, in ref is in every message. Um, yeah, and you would need to create some database of information there in order to know which controllable clusters or charging stations would be available for certain actions. Um, and then you can see that uh, this is then basically communicated from the utility to the charge operator and the charge operator would need to build something in their CSMS, which then translated to the correct charging station cluster. And you can see it can use the set charging profile request, which is something which is already in, in, uh, in OSP uh, 2.0.1 or 1 1.6. So this is actually, uh, for this use case, no extension to OSP uh, 2.0.1 or 1.6 uh, is required. Um, yeah, and I, uh, I just wanted to point it out because yeah, that's, that's also a use case uh, we have. And then for the next one, which is about the high frequency ride through. Uh, so that is usually uh, like a cutoff curves, uh, which uh, basically if you have a high frequency and um, you can have a spike in frequency, and if it's for a short period of time, then it could be accepted. But if it's a spike in frequency for a long period of time, then it will be cut off, right? So it's, uh, it's like <laughs> this type of, of curve. Um, and if you want to represent that curve into a charging station, you would need to set different set points x and y uh, points from which then the lines can be drawn in order to create this cutoff curve um, so for that uh, IEC 6150 has created the DHFL logical node uh, which makes use of the yeah the PTOF um, logical node and the PTOF is something which is out of the the DUR um, environment which is something which was already in the IEC 6150 standard uh, which is for uh, protection, uh, basically for triggering uh, some protection device. Um, uh, so you can see that we use the, the DHFT for again the the mode. So that's also uh, or the uh, if it's the curve is enabled or not. So the mod STV, as well as a priority uh, setting, as you can stack the different curves and then which one uh, has a priority, as well as then the um, geographical location again, and then for the actual settings of such a curve. The PTOF logical node is used where you can uh, use uh, STVAL and um, this uh, other attribute in order to set uh, X and uh, Y and X uh, uh, axis to um, basically define how you want your curve to, to look. Um, and these 10 um, PTOFs can then be basically communicated to the 
a chargement operator, where then again the chargement operator would make, need to make such a translation uh, to then OSPP, where then the new uh, object of set dual control request can be used in order to also set this uh, curve to uh, the charging station, wherefore then, um, yeah, the, the enumeration, I think, uh, of uh, high frequency trip can be used with, with then also the curve uh, attributes, which then represents the different uh, uh, coordinates for the uh, cutoff curve, basically. And uh, yeah, that is that is a setup of, of the, the seventh use case for high frequency ride through. Of course, pretty similar for the low frequency, also for the for the voltage, but we have basically established the mapping between 650 and um, uh, OCP, where then a translation between the two protocols is required uh, in order to to make that work. And then lastly, um, another use case which is uh, a more of a set point, uh, which is all pretty uh, pretty similar. It uses a different logical node from IC 6150, where then can again set a either uh, generating or uh, loading power factor and so also um, yeah, a positive or a negative power factor uh, which then again with the uh, enablement the priority and the geographical location of which asset should be uh, impacted um, and this can then be translated again to the OSPP uh, message of set dual control request with then the set point power factor inject which then has these different or these same types of, of attributes which can be translated and then exchanged to the charging station to set uh, this, uh, this on the charging station. Um, so then uh, the conclusions uh, that um, yeah, more or less utilities would need to define these, uh, these uh, group of charging stations um, and uh, yeah, they can use um, IC6150 together with OSP for their control in order to comply to local grid codes or the events, the requirements for generators. And we see this uh, that this is required in the future due to the law. Um, it is a logical choice for the utilities to use these two uh, protocols um, because, yeah, utilities are mainly using 6150 uh, already, and um, a translation between 6150 and OSP as a charge point uh, operator. Uh, would make sense in order to, to get these settings. Um, and the addition for their support, uh, vehicle X to OSP 2.1, uh, makes it all possible. So all the, all the elements uh, are there in order to uh, convey these uh, messages or information to the charging stations. And also uh, utilities will most likely require uh, tested and certified solutions. And that's, that's their way of operating uh, in acquiring new uh, um, and new IEDs uh, for uh, uh, substation automation control, and this is of course also another uh, asset to add to their uh, to their infrastructure. So they will, uh, yeah, uh, require tested and certified solutions. Then um, the white paper is published both both on the Open Charge Alliance website and on the DNV website. So uh, these are the links. I suppose the slides will be shared. Uh, uh, shortly, um, and also uh, preparations are made to publish to the technical committee uh, 57 of the IEC uh, or the, the NEN uh, of the yeah the committee uh, 57. So and also DMV will be present at um, the Smart Grid Forum in October in Amsterdam, where a lot of 650 topics will be discussed. Where they we also have uh, about 100 handouts for these uh, for this white paper. Um, so yeah, uh, if you want to read it, then uh, you can get it. Uh, then how to get started um, is uh, of course that you uh, should get the white paper and read it. Um, from the charging station uh, point, you would need to implement uh, the OSP 2.1 DUR messages. Um, from the CSMS point of view, which you would need to do a bit more, uh, which is uh, uh, define these controllable clusters for charging stations. Maybe you have you have clusters already based on geographical location. Of course, you would need to know what what type of um, yeah messages for 2.1 they would have implemented, uh, and uh, and see how what can be controlled and what their capabilities are. Uh, and of course, you would need to create a uh, IC 61850 uh, interface uh, with the CSMS, which would need to 
translate 6152 to OSP in order to yeah, uh, map the messages correctly. Uh, we have provided the mapping, but of course this needs to be translated into an actual code. Um, then uh, the data, yeah, this data model, uh, which we have defined, then uh, should be should be set up and uh, translated accordingly. So uh, yeah, that's what the, full, the next point as well. And if you have set it up, then you could maybe start with an internal project of trying to send some DER control uh, communication uh, with through your CSMS to to see if if you were be are able to establish uh, such communication and thereafter a, a pilot project with a local utility. Uh, would be a uh, would be a next step in order to to get this uh, set up and once again i want to mention the the different parts which are essential to creating all of this uh, so yeah please uh, have a look at those if you're getting started and that is my presentation so uh, thank you very much if you have any questions then please uh, let me know if you have a question i have a microphone you should go online to do it as well Yes, it should be on. Uh, we have about 100 people online. They are asking questions too, but I will uh, mix it with yours and you're here. So uh, everybody wave at the camera. <laughs> <laughs> here you go. Can you please state your name and uh, ask a question? Good morning. My name is Platon Stathiadis. Uh, I work at Evbox. Uh, can you go one slide back, please? So I assume in this slide, when you say what's needed for the charging station, it refers to a DC station, right? Because for AC, you need also the 1518 to communicate to the, the vehicle. Uh, what I want to ask is two things. One is, how does the DSO verifies that what he wanted, what he sent to the station is done? Is there also a way to check it with some message back or not? I think the, and maybe Frank, you can answer better, but I think you have also introduced a, a feedback loop uh, where you can request the uh, the set points, right? Uh, <clears throat> yeah, the <clears throat> utility can also request what uh, what the settings are at at the station. Of course, the, the utility sets the settings to the CSMS, and uh, then uh, normally who would have to assume that the CSMS activates it, but the utility can get back the readings from the, the power consumption from that that cluster that is con controlling so by that way he would be able to uh, to check it thanks frank and my second part was lately i stumped uh, upon another spec another specification uh, which is called ic 63460 i don't know if you are aware of it so i'm wondering what's the difference with the 61850 um so I think uh, I'm not sure, but I think the IC stand you're referring to is regarding the use cases of uh, DER control, and I think they're just they're just getting started. So there's not really anything uh, there yet, and they are using IC 6150 um, pretty similar to what we have done here in order to define these use cases. But I think it's it's more focused on the use case instead of having a mapping between uh, how you could actually make it work. Um, so would you say that it's complementary? So yeah. actually, well, yeah, actually, in the white paper, we, we also commented that uh, recently these initiatives have been started, and once there is actually some deliverable, uh, we should reassess and see if we can add some use cases to our our white paper. So it's indeed, I would say, complementary depending on their outcome. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Anyone else? I will I will take an online question first. Ah, you in a minute. One moment. Let's see. Um, this one is from Adriano Pairu. Uh, the presented use cases are focused into the operational needs. How do you envision the needs or use cases uh, for management, uh, such as upgrading firmware or can configuration of the charging stations? And would the utilities be controlling these actions as well? No. Um, yeah, no, that, that remains within the OSP domain, right? So um, all these functionalities are within OSP uh, 2.31, 1.6, uh, and so forth. So with the extension of 1, uh, 2.1 on top of that uh, specification, 
it allows the utilities to send these types of configuration but the main the, the ownership of the charging station and the maintenance of, of such just remains at the chargement operator it's basically an, an additional link from the utility to the chargement operator but yeah as we said in the beginning is that we we keep it we keep uh, the ownership at the chargement operator okay thank you let's see here we had a question can you please state your name Hello, uh, my name is Ralf from Exact Systems Germany. So uh, you said it is mainly focused on DC bidirectional charging. No. Uh, so are there generic uh, differences between DC and AC bidirectional uh, things to consider at the moment for either the charger or the uh, for the charger is clear for the uh, CMS. Uh... Um, yeah, I think Frank can maybe answer that if I try maybe um, yeah I to... can uh, try to answer your your question um, from the charging station point of view there is well the, the difference between DC and AC is of course that for DC the inverter is in the charger so the DER commands that are sent to the charger are then implemented directly to its own inverter if you're doing AC bidirectional then the charger has to send these settings to the vehicle and it can do that via 15.8-20 and yeah, you can have a either a split approach or a uh, approach where the vehicle manages everything so uh, if the vehicle inverter in the vehicle is able to implement all these DER controls then with the extension that is now being designed for 15.8-20 to support DER messages you can send these curves for trip curves and frequency droop directly to the vehicle and the vehicle will implement it. If the vehicle does not support it, then the charging station has to do it for it. So the charging station uses the, the charge loop control to control the vehicle. But that might not be fast enough in all situations. So depending on what your demands are, uh, the vehicle is allowed or is not allowed to do bidirectional. I hope that answers the question. Yeah. So AC is more complicated. AC is the more complicated. Yeah, yeah. AC is definitely more complicated, but uh, may also be more useful because you're connected for a longer time. But that's yeah. We'll have to see in the market how that develops. Okay. Another online question uh, by Auke Osterhof. How relevant is IEC 61850 for CPOs when they manage a cluster that doesn't contain V2G ch chargers? For example, a fast charging site uh, at the side of a highway. Um, okay, yeah, I, I guess current uh, installments don't have indeed the vehicle to grid uh, capabilities. Um, but yeah, uh, if in the future, it may require that also these fast charging stations along the highway uh, have limited capacity because of uh, basically uh, our uh, grid map being totally red due to the congestion we have in the Netherlands or throughout different countries. Then maybe they, the, um, the charging stations also need to comply to uh, certain boundaries or uh, uh, set points. So in that sense, um, yeah, it would be it would be a requirement from the regulation most likely. Uh, that the charging stations need to comply to the grid codes uh, because the EVs are able to charge bidirectional. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Any questions here? Then I will take another one online. Um, let's see. Is there a document for best practices on defining the controllable clusters? One moment. It's changing. Mm -hmm. um, no. Controllable clusters of charging stations. No, well, um, I don't think so. Uh, I would say it makes sense to have it uh, geographically located also where, of course, the grid connection uh, is coming in for the site where the charging stations are at, because that is, of course, the, the point where utility to charge an operation has the connection, and that is actually where the utility would like to regulate its power. Um, so, yeah, maybe that is a bit of best practice. Okay, now I have uh, two questions by Yanis Papadopoulos. Went, <laughs> I think that went uh, very well. Um, is it 1511.8-2 compatible? Uh, I mean, if we are just talking about smart charging functionalities and its services to the grid. Um, oh, for the first use, 
What do you mean the first year scale? So not bidirectional, but just general smart just set. Class. Yeah, okay. If you want to set just um, limits, I guess so. Uh, but maybe the uh, yeah the power factor or something, which then is also uh, discharging, then uh, not so much. Okay. Yeah. And his second uh, question: uh, Does the communication have any cybersecurity measures integrated? Okay, good question. Um, so ISC 6150 uh, per default doesn't have uh, cybersecurity. But there's an other standard. Oh well, it does similar to OSP with uh, certificates exchange. But besides that, there's also ISC 62351, if I'm not mistaken, and that is like security layer on top of the communication end-to-end to device and uh, this is all something DNV is also uh, quite heavily involved in also setting up the testing and certification program for that um, so yeah indeed it is possible to have uh, secure uh, IEC 6150 communication with this other uh, standard on top of it but it's quite complex okay or I wouldn't do it for a pilot project mm, let's see uh, Asaf Hakash uh, says hi i wanted to ask if there are any updates with scheduling in 2.0 don't know if this 2.0. is relevant for i don't think that's a no question it's, I can answer. it came through perhaps for another session um is there a plan for osp 1.6 j uh, to get extension with iec 61850 question asked by smaran subaya um, I guess use case, uh, the third use case or the first one I showed would work because uh, it uses uh, the OSP message which is already there, set charging, uh, uh, smart charging profile. Um, but I think from a, a OCA point of view, you keep 1.6 as it is and we build further on 2.0.1 or, or 2.1. So no. Okay. okay. Uh, Lonneke and not. So, uh, <laughs> <laughs> I will do one more question unless someone here has a question. No, because we will be rounding up soon. Okay. At 11 o'clock, we'll have a new session. Let's see. Um, where does IEC 61850 stand as compared to other DERMS uh, protocols like e, uh, IEEE uh, 2030.5 uh, okay. or a Open ADR in the EU, EU? And which protocol is more? Preferred. In the EU, EU. Yep. Um, I think that OpenADR is mainly coming from US. Uh, also, IEEE 2030.5 um, similar, and uh, IEEE or um, IC 6150 is uh, yeah, ma mainly maintained or, or used in throughout Europe. Uh, but I think they're also expanding to to US. So it's indeed a, yeah still a bit of a. I, have we also included IEEE 2030.5. Because uh, Frank uh, and we have also looked at that specification because they have done a comparison, um, so it's still a bit to see what what ends up being the actual. One. Yeah, so this is uh, Lonneke Dries, if I can add to that. So of course, uh, it's really important for utilities all across the world that at the time where at a large scale vehicles start feeding back into the grid, that uh, the utility is taken into consideration. Yeah. So this paper explains how you can combine 61850 with OCPP, but of course not every utility everywhere uses this specific standard and it was already mentioned you have uh, uh, that uh, IEEE 2030.5, the, so there are more uh, standards out there and of course those utilities are also uh, in areas where OCPP is being used. So what we have done in the messages that are in 2.1, which you see here also on the slide, we've made the messages as such that they both comply yeah. to the IEC 61850 as to the 2030.5 so we think that the OCPP messages are agnostic so whether you implement your charging infrastructure in america or in europe from the OCPP side it's it's uh, the same OCPP and then of course uh, depending on the region and the utilities that you want to connect to uh, you would have to implement either 61850 or IEEE 20.5 or even maybe another one. So this paper focuses on IEC 61850, uh, but uh, I think uh, we can also make some similar uh, explanation how to combine 20.30.5 and, and OCPP for, for, for those uh, companies active in, in regions where utilities require that uh, to connect uh, bi-directional to their grid. Yeah. Okay, thank you, Lonneke. I will be closing this session. Uh, thank you, Casper. 
Nice presentation. Thank you, Thank you everyone. In 15 minutes, we will have uh, Jacob Betts here for the roadmap. And uh, people online, you can log in for that. We will start in about 15 minutes. And I'll see you then. Thank you. Thank you. Toppen op met zijn of jij hebt het Dankjewel voor je aanvullingen. Ja. Nou, misschien. Ah, hier is dat. Yeah, but it's okay, it's not a backup, it's a backup.